if you have any questions or comments, um, the chat is open, so feel free to chat. It's always interesting to see where um, our shareholders or descendants are joining us from. So if you want to share where you're joining us from with joining us from today, please drop it in the chat. Hello from Philly, Crescent City, California, cool, Salem, Oregon, Seaview, Washington, welcome, Santa Fe, New Mexico, Eagle River, Arlington, Washington, Concrete, Washington, Hatcher Pass, awesome. So it's 12.01, we can get started. Um, good afternoon, welcome everyone. My name is Anna Grayson and I work in the communications department at Bering Straits Native Corporation. I am pleased to welcome you today to our first Inupac language workshop with shareholder Gail Smith Heisler. Welcome Gail. I want to get started with reading your bio. Um, for the last few years, Gail has been helping revitalize the Inupak language by maintaining the Inupak word of the day pages on Facebook and TikTok. The pages now have thousands of followers from around the world. She has been featured in the Gnome Nugget for her efforts and recently collaborated with an online digital travel magazine to highlight Inupak culture and language. <clears throat> Gail was born and raised in Oregon in a mainly English speaking home until she moved to Nome in her middle school years. Since then, she credits her mother, Alma Smith Heisler, and grandparents, Frank and Edna Anangatoga, with teaching her important and basic language skills while camping, hunting, and gathering from the land. <clears throat> she was recently asked to teach Learn in a Back Language during Iditarod week, and will also begin teaching conversational in a Back One at UAF. She is passionate about sharing the knowledge she's learned with others and hopes to contribute to the important task of revitalizing the Inupak language. So Kriyana Gail, for sharing with us your time and knowledge today. E, thank you for having me here. I am so excited and I am just so excited to see everybody's names pop up on the attendees list. Let's see, we have... Tucson, Arizona. Welcome everyone. Looks like we have more attendees trickling in. But if you want to get started and pull up your presentation. Okay. Um, My desktop is already. I just need for you to sh give me the share screen powers. <laughs> got it. <laughs> okay. Okay. Okay, you should be good to go. All right. Okay, can everybody see my screen okay? It should just be the one screen with the, um, my face on there. All right. Okay. I'm loving everybody's chat comments and I'm gonna minimize the chat window so that I don't get too distracted. <laughs> Pagalerivsi, uh, welcome. Wang at the Karok Irak, Nelwang Mutin, Gail Smith Heisler, Akara Panikurok, Alma Smith Heisler, Apara Donald Smith Heisler, Anara Mutasak, Edna Anangatorok, Suli Irma Dutter, Atatara Ilrok, Frank Anangatorok, Suli John Smith Heisler. Ileat 
Roseburg, Oregon, um, Welcome. Uh, my name is Tapkarok um, Eirak. Those are my Inupak names. My English name is Gail Smith Heisler. My mother is Alma Smith Heisler. Um, her Inupak name is Bunny Kuruk. My father was Donald Smith Heisler. My grandmother is Edna Anangatogok. Her Inupak name is Nudasuk. And my um, other grandmother was Irma Dutter. My grandfathers were the late Frank Anangatogok. His Inupak name was Ilhok, and the late John Smith Heisler. Uh, my family, we all come from uh, Shishmaraf, Mary's Igloo, Ohio, and I am from Roseburg, Oregon. So I am very excited to um, share the knowledge that I have with everybody and so excited to see everybody. So um, Inupak has three main dialects in the state of Alaska. Um, the first and more well-documented dialect is the North Slope dialect, and that features um, Inupak from like around Utkarvik or the Barrow region. Another dialect is the Northwest um, dialect, and that features um, the Inupak language around the Kotzebue region. And then we also have the Seward Peninsula, Peninsula dialect, um, which is what I am going to try my best to feature whenever I do teach. Um, most of what I have learned, um, like through my classes at UAF have been with the North Slope dialect. So I always tell everybody, I kind of feel like I'm learning, you know, two or three different languages at once because I'm learning um, the North Slope Inupiaq, I'm learning uh, Stewart Peninsula Inupiaq, and then I'm trying to um, translate everything in English so that I make sure I'm learning it. So sometimes I, I might have like a little um, blank moment where I'm like, where was I? But I notice a lot of other people kind of have the same issues too. Along with each region of dialect, um, each village might also have its own sub-dialect. Um, and if you've grown up in you know, the village or any one of these regions in Alaska, I'm sure um, you're very familiar with that. So in our region, which is highlighted in green, you'll see that um, our region encompasses the majority of Alaska Seward Peninsula, which is all the way from the land, coastal lands of the Eastern Norton Sound. Um, and our region features three different native languages um, where uh, Siberian Yupik is spoken, Central Yupik is also spoken, and Inupak. So I think that gives um, our region a lot of unique diversity, which is very beautiful. I, I love listening to um, native speakers in the other languages too, because even if I don't understand them, I feel like I can pick up on a lot of very similar words. So just to kind of jump in a little bit, um, I like when I'm teaching somebody about the Inupak language, I like to make sure that I share a little bit about the Inupak alphabet, as well as how words are pronounced in our mouths, as well as how we use our breaths. So that's something that I just wanted to quickly go through. Um, and I just want to point out that each dialect um, and subdialect might not use all the same alphabet characters. Um, I know in North Slope, they use a lot more of like the special characters, like the N with the eyebrow over it. Um, and sometimes uh, they use like the L with the dot under it. Um, and in the Seward Peninsula dialect, we don't um, really have those. So just to kind of go over, um, we have in our mouths, we pronounce things uh, each letter of the alphabet differently. We have bilabial, 
um, letters that we use our lips to make sounds with, such as like the P and P, the M as in nikluk We have um, alveolar sounds, which include like the T, the L with the squiggly line through it, L's, S's, N's. Um, and if you ever take time by yourself, you'll notice that um, like when you say T, you go T, T with the front of your mouth. Um, you have the L with the um, little squiggly line through it. That makes a sh sound, a sh sound. We also have the L as an Ulu. We have the S as an Asi. And then we have the N in Kuyana. Um, those all make sounds um, like just behind your front teeth. We have labiodental sounds where the sound is made in between your lips and your teeth, such as the V and uva. Continuing on, we have post alveolar sounds where you bend the tip of your tongue back um, toward the back of your teeth, such as like the R and Ari or the SR as in sik shik. I know some dialects will say shik shik. Um, and in North Slope, sometimes the SR sound is um, pronounced like uh, shra. Um, we also have velar sounds where um, the middle of your tongue is pressed against the roof of your mouth, such as the, uh, the K and kayuktuk, the G as in ugruk, and the N with the curly tail as in ungun. So when you're pronouncing those all by yourself, um, just be aware, like, where are you, you know, what shape does your mouth make? Where does your tongue lie inside your mouth? Um, we also have palatal sounds where the tip, your tongue touches the roof of your mouth, such as the Y and Quiana. Um, and I think the last two um, we have are uvular, where the back of your tongue touches um, the back of your throat, such as the Q. So, the Q in Inubak does not have an English equivalent, um, neither does the G with the dot over it. If you um, pay attention to other native speakers, when we say, or when they say Koyana, it's way in the back of the throat versus a regular Q like quit. The G with the dot over it has a more like guttural sound. I know some people don't like that word, but that's always how I became familiar with it. Um, so we would pronounce the G with the dot as alhanak. Um, so it's a very alhanak. We also have glottal sounds, which include the H as in high, um, or um, like ogolkak. The H is not um, the same as an English H, it's pronounced further back in your throat. So stops, fricatives, and sonorants. Um, in addition to learning where in the mouth each consonant is pronounced, it's very important to become familiar with how our breaths are used while we're speaking. So what are stops, fricatives, and sonorants? Stops are stops of breath. Um, they're consonant sounds that are formed by completely stopping the airflow. We have voiceless and voiced fricatives. Voiceless fricatives are breath, flows through a narrow opening, which creates friction. With voice fricatives, vocal cords are open and there's no vibration. With sonorants, there is softer um, method of using your breath and you can sing them continuously. So here are some examples of some stops um, with consonant sounds. With stops, if you ever um, put your mouth or put your hand in front of your mouth, um, and say the P like in panic, so pa, you can feel your breath stop, pa. And same, the same goes for T as in tutu, the CH as in nutchik, the K as in kerutit, the Q as in quad, and a pause or apostrophe. So we don't have a lot of those, um, but the apostrophe is a stop. So in nong ah, you can um, feel your breath stop against your hand when you're pronouncing that. We have voiceless fricatives where um, the breath flows through a narrow opening, which creates friction. So you can see like the V as in tavsi, 
the L with the cur the squiggly line as an uck The R is an eerie. The um, special air L character with the dot and the squiggly line through it as in sick cluck. And then we have the KH as in akka and the QH as in akalik. The H as in hoke. The S as in siku. And the SR as in sikshik. So we also have our voice fricatives where the vocal cords are open and there's no vibration. I know the V appears here again, um, but it's pronounced just a little bit different. So the V in avik, um, uh, your vocal cords remain open. You have the L as in naluak, the Y as in ayak, the L with the dot under it as in ilak, the G as in igyak, and the G with the dot as in igri. So now we come to our sonorants, and these are comprised mainly of our N sounds. So in Inupak, we have the N as in Nanik, which is very similar to the English N. We have the N with an eyebrow above it, which I've heard most people compare that to the Spanish N. So it's a Ñ, it's like a Ñ sound. And then we have the N with the curly tail, which is pronounced with an NG sound. So it's Angun. And we are finally at our Inupak alphabet or Achagat. So <clears throat> I always encourage people to not just um, study and try to remember our alphabet, but I always encourage people to just stop and take your time in um, studying what sound each of our letters make. So we'll go through them quickly together. We have the A, which is similar um, to an English A, but we make the sound ah uh, instead of ah. Uh. We don't really use a flat A sound in, in your back. There's the B, which makes a B sound. We have the CH, which is typical, um, typically similar to the English CH as in ch. We have the G, which is similar to an English G, G. We have the G with the dot above it, which has no English equivalent. And that makes, um, you pronounce it in the back of your throat, ha. We have the H, which is pronounced further back in your throat than an English H, so ha. We have the L, which is, um, oops, I'm sorry. That's the I. The I is pronounced like um, an E sound, not so much um, a quick I sound like you find in English. Eyes make the E sound. We have the K, which is similar to the, oops. We have the K, which is similar to the English K, and it makes the K sound. We have L as in La. We have the L with the slash through it, which is the H. I know some people have a hard time um, pronouncing the H sound uh, when they're first learning. Um, but it's actually one of my favorite letters because it is so fun to say. Uh, we have the L with the dot under it, and that makes the LIA sound. And then we have the L with the squiggly line and the dot under it. And this one always gives me, this one I always have a little bit of a struggle with. Um, but it's mainly found in like the um, North Slope dialect that I've seen and sometimes with the Northwestern dialect. And that makes a hia sound. So again, with the L, we have la, sha, lia, and hia. <laughs> and we come to the M, which is a typical English M, ma. We have the N, which makes a N. We have the N with the eyebrow, and it makes a N sound similar to a Spanish N. We have the N with the curly tail, which makes an NG sound, so N. Um, if you ever notice in, in your back, we don't have um, an NG together because it, we have the N with the curly tail. 
We also have the P, which is kind of like a hard cross between the P and the B sound, and it's a B. We have Q, which is further it's pronounced further in back of the throat than in English Q, so K. We have the R, which makes a R sound. Our S is similar to the English S, so it would be S. We have the SR, which I explain to people, it makes like the SHR sound or sometimes an SR sound. So SHR or SRA, depending on your dialect. We also have the T, which is kind of like a hard cross between a T and a D sound. So da. We have a U, which makes a typical oo sound. So in Inupak, the U doesn't make an a uh sound. That's why we have the A. So um, we have the V, which is a typical V. We have the W, which is also a typical W. We have the Y, which is a typical Y sound. We have a Z, which is just like the English equivalent, Z. And we also have the ZR sound, um, which is Zra. So in the Seward Peninsula dialect, um, you'll see the Z and the ZR sound, but you won't see that in the North Slope. Or I don't think you'll, I don't think the Northwestern dialect has the Zs in their alphabet either or their dialect. So one thing that's also really special about Inupiaq is we have something called diphthongs. So diphthongs are a sound formed by the combination of two vowels to make a single syllable in which the sound begins as one vowel and moves toward the other. So we have the double A, which makes a long ah sound like walk. We have the AI, which makes a uh, longer a sound like cake. We have the AU, which makes a similar sound to like the O sound like coat. Um, but uh, in the North Slope and Northwestern dialects, the AU sound um, is pronounced ow, like cow. We have the IA, which is pronounced e ya, like regaled ya. We have the double I, which makes a very, a much longer E sound as in keep. We have the IU, which makes a sound like a female um, sheep, U or ew. <laughs> we have the UA, which makes a sound like UA as in quantity. Um, and you'll see that in uh, um, a lot of other like combinations with Q. Um, we have UI, which makes it sound like ooey, like gooey. And we have the double U um, diphthong, which makes a longer oo sound as in cool or book. So before we get to learning more about creating our intro in new back introduction, um, you may have had a chance to take a look at the worksheet that was sent out. Um, and I did try to include like the phonetic pronunciation because that helps me um, as I'm learning how to pronounce Inupiaq. Um, I, I learned a very good skill from Tetok uh, Josie Berdan when I um, started taking class, classes with her where have you ever seen um, or watched kids participate in the spelling bee? You'll notice sometimes they clap or like they'll tap the side of their leg or something as they're spelling. That's also how, um, that's a, a tool that I use when I'm trying to figure out how to either break down um, how to pronounce an Inupiaq word to somebody or if I'm trying to um, figure out how to read it and say it myself. Um, so, um, like with, uh, we'll, we'll take the number one, for example, a dosik. So how I would break that down is a dosik. And in my mind, that helps 
me to slow down and really become familiar with each syllable in that word. Um, if you ever notice, Inupiaq is a very syllabic language where um, our, our um, alphabet um, you know, is broken down by syllables sometimes. So um, if you're able to break down the word by syllable, it'll make it really easy for you um, as you're learning how to spell in a new back, as you're learning how to pronounce in a new back, and just becoming familiar with the language itself. Um, I always tell people, you know, get, write down some words that you're very familiar with, and then just break it down. Um, say it in your head a few times, and then, you know, write a line in between where you think the syllables are. And of course, um, you know, checking with, um, uh, someone um, who's uh, a native speaker or a little bit more fluent than you are um, is a really good way to kind of like check yourself. So with all that said, I hope I didn't go too fast. Um, we'll go on to the next slide, which is creating your in your back introduction. So when I was first asked, asked by Bering Straits Native Corporation to host an online language workshop, my mind raced with so many ideas because I get so excited um, teaching other people and sharing our language with each other and sharing our language with people who are not familiar with it. Because I love learning in your back, I love sharing it, and I love watching others when um, you know they learn something new and you can just see it click in their mind and they're just like, oh, I got it. It makes me so excited for people. Um, so why, why should we create an introduction? Well, when you have, whenever you meet an elder or another in your back person, it's important for us to not just tell them who we are, but during that first meeting and introduction with them, you're forming a connection with them. Um, and I was always, I remember in high school when I was first learning um, about my culture and learning in your back in high school, um, it was always reiterated to me by my elders that you always need to tell somebody who your family is because sometimes they, they, they don't know the younger generation. They don't know us always by our English name. Um, so sometimes when you're introducing yourself by your Inupiaq name, the elder or Inupiaq person that you met, they'll know exactly who you are by who you are named after um, sometimes. And I think that is such a special way to connect with somebody. Um, and I find as I'm getting older, I do that too with my nieces and nephew. Um, when they'll, you know, talk to me about their friends, I'll say, well, who is their mom and dad? And, you know, they'll tell me, I'm like, oh, okay, I know who that is. So now I get why that was so important for my elders to know who my family was. Um, and sometimes they didn't always know my mom's married name, which is Smith Heisler. Um, they, they knew her by her maiden name, which was Anangatogak. So, and also um, one other thing I think is important to reflect on is when, um, like when missionaries and other people started coming to our region, and I'll give my family as kind of an example, my great grandfather had two brothers and they were, um, their parents died during one of the sicknesses back then. So they were um, orphans for a little bit. Um, when the missionaries came and, um, you know, helped record their names and everything like that, they didn't share the same last name. And that always frustrated me as I was learning more about my family history and my family tree. And even to this day, I love like when I'm on TikTok or Facebook and I'm interacting with people, I can't tell you how many times I found a cousin and they didn't know a lot about our family history because, you know, they grew up out of state or something. And it makes me so happy to be able to help them connect with their family. So 
my uh, great grandpa, his name was uh, James E. Rock, or just E. Rock, and that's where my second in your back name comes from. Well, his two brothers were um, Mosquito, or Frank Mosquito, and um, Killick. Well, before Killick was able to have his English name given to him or recorded, he had passed away at a young age. So um, my grandmother only knew him as her uncle Killick. Um, so that's just an example of, you know, why it's important to be able to make a connection with other people. Because, you know, growing up, my grandma always told me, don't marry your cousin, you have to know who you come from. So that was always important for me to make that connection myself because I didn't want to go against what she was telling me and accidentally date my cousin. Okay, so here is um, the introduction worksheet that I created for the class. On the left hand of the screen, you'll see um, that we have eight lines. Um, and this is the introduction that I shared um, at the beginning when I introduced myself. So Wanga um, means I am. So when you, um, when you meet someone, you say Wanga Tapkaruk, I am Tapkaruk. In the right hand, um, I have the phonetic pronunciation written out and I've also broken the word down by syllable. So you can see um, for number two, Naluang Mutun means my English name is, I'm, I put my English name down. So Naluang Mutun is sometimes um, a bit intimidating for someone to learn. And so that's why um, I try to break it down by syllable. So again, we have na luang miu tun. Um, and then uh, we have for line number three, akaga, my mother is um, akaga. So the Inupak word for mother is just aka. By adding the ga at the end of it, that signifies ownership, my. And then for line number four, we have apaga. The um, Inupak word for father is apa. So we add the ga at the end to signify ownership. My father, apaga. For line number five, we have anaga. And again, um, grandmother in Inupak is ana. And we add the ga at the end to show ownership. Anaga, my grandmother is. Um, line number six, we have a tataga. My grandfather is, and again, the Inupak word for grandfather is a tata. We add ga at the end to signify ownership. A tataga. So you'll see with, um, with these, um, you know, telling who your parents and grandparents are, you have um, the um, vowel and diphthongs in there. So if it's a double A, it's a longer ah sound. Um, and then number seven, um, we have the Inupak translation for my family is from Ileatka um, is the um, word for my family. Mughurut uh, is the plural form for um, you know, where they live, where they came from. They're the people of this place. Um, and I've seen where people, you know, if you live in Anchorage, you're not gonna have an Inupak word for Anchorage. So I see where people will put, you know, Ileatka Anchorage Mughurut. Um, and that's fine. If you do know, or you're able to find the Inupak um, name for, where you're from. I always encourage people to use that, especially if like you're a gnome, um, the Inupak, ling, or Inupak word for gnome is Sikmaswak. And that also has its own um, variations by um, dialect. I know with uh, the King Island dialect, they say uh, Um The second S in that word is a Z sound. Um, and then the last line, um, you're telling the person where you're from. 
you are the person of this place. Um, and the runga at the end of the word is um, like the, the single form of where I'm from. So um, I could either put Sitnaswak uh, runga, or I could just put uh, Roseburg runga or Oregon runga. So um, I'm always more than happy to help somebody out with um, creating their introduction. I know we only have an, or, uh, an hour here together, so I wanted to make sure that um, I'm going to leave you with ways to get a hold of me either on social media, and I'm also going to leave you with some resources. So um, I, um, I didn't really know the importance of speaking your introduction in a new back when I was younger. Um, I participated in the Miss Arctic Native Brotherhood pageant here in Nome in 2001 after I graduated. And looking back, sometimes I'm a little bit embarrassed because um, I went to the pageant. I didn't have my introduction created. Um, I spoke in English and that's all that I knew. I didn't think of the importance of creating my introduction in New York. So I ended up winning um, the pageant that year and ANB, the Arctic Native Brotherhood here in Nome, they sent me over to the World Eskimo Indian Olympics in Fairbanks um, that following July, where I participated in the Miss Weo pageant. And I, one thing that is so memorable to me is listening to all the other girls speak their introduction in their own language. Um, there were girls that were from Katabu, from Barrow or Utkalvik. Um, one of my friends that I met there, she is from Wainwright. Um, another girl was from um, around Bethel. Um, but listening to them in their own language it's beautiful. I love hearing other people's language. So that's something that stuck with me. And that's something that um, I take away. I want to make sure that I can introduce myself in Inupak to my elders or to other Inupak people, because that's who I am. That's part of my identity. Um, I'm half white. I'm half Inupak. And my new black family comes from, you know, two different places. But knowing who you are, being proud of the people that, you know, live before you to create you and form the person that you are, you should be proud of every aspect of yourself. Um, so when I was younger, I used to think, oh, I should just change my name to Ananga Togok. I don't know if I want to be Smithheiser anyway anymore. It's too English. <laughs> um, but you know, after talking with one of my close friends, I realized I should be proud of who I am entirely and both of my heritage. So um, if you're not, you know, if you're not full in your back, be proud of yourself anyway. Be proud of who you come from and the people that live before you um, because they created a beautiful person and our culture that we share together is so beautiful. So moving on, <laughs> um, I manage, um, well, I started creating a lot of my new backward of the day videos using TikTok because it was just more user-friendly for me. Um, so the TikTok page that's listed on there is my own personal page. Um, so I didn't think that I would have as many followers as I do now. And I don't think I have a whole lot of followers, which I'm fine with. But I get to interact with so many people all the way from like in Alaska to others who um, are, they have an Inupiaq heritage and they live downstates all the way to some really amazing people in Canada and in Greenland. Um, I can't tell you how much I enjoy getting to interact with people from all over and learning like a lot of people from Greenland will say, 
oh, well, this word of the day that you shared with me, it means this in my language. And they'll teach me more about their language. And it's like, it's so cool because I find similarities in their word with a different word in our language. Um, so with the Facebook page, um, that started out with me just sharing um, my own Inupac Word of the Day videos on my own personal Facebook page. And one of my close friends who I didn't know was the creator of the Inupac Word of the Day Facebook page asked if I would become um, another administrator so that I can share my videos onto that bigger Facebook page um, because there hadn't been a whole lot of activity. So I was like, hey, sure, you know, that's cool. Um, and I get to interact with some of the most amazing people on there. Um, again, people from all over um, educate me. And I also, I get corrected on there too. Sometimes I might make a mistake with my word of the day or with, um, you know, my spelling or my pronunciation. And so I get taught too. Um, I just created a new Instagram page for In Your Back Word of the Day. I was just sharing um, video, like In Your Back Word of the Day videos to my personal Instagram, but I figured I might as well mirror the Facebook page and um, create a new one for Instagram. So if you happen to visit the uh, In Your Back Word of the Day Instagram page, it's very bare bones right now. Um, so just bear with me as I'm uh, working on moving a lot of videos over to that page. Um, one thing I will tell people is I'm not very Instagram savvy. Um, I know how to basically post to Instagram and kind of like interact with some people, but um, I need to really just learn more. <laughs> um, I'm also including some websites that I use frequently and mobile apps. Um, you'll see that I have the Inupiat Word Finder app, the Inupiracta app, and the Achagut app. The first two apps um, feature the North Slope dialect. And then the website that I have listed, um, especially the Ili Sakativut website, I use that almost daily sometimes. Um, it, it has the online version of the um, of a dictionary featuring the King Island dialect, which is very similar to my grandpa's dialect. And they have so many amazing resources. Um, if you go to the Ili Sakativut website, you'll see that they have um, like a references page where you can also um, find out the different dictionaries that are available. I did order myself the um, Edna McLean Inupac Dictionary, which features the North Slope dialect. But while it's a different dialect um, and they have you know, different grammar rules than um, uh, the Seward Peninsula dialect does, it has been very helpful in helping me learn and understand grammar rules, period. Um, and then, um, yeah, the other, the other websites, um, they do feature the North Slope or Northwestern dialect. Um, if you are able to check out the Rosetta Stone Inupiatun um, website featured by the North Slope Borough, it is super cool. Um, it's the online version of Rosetta Stone and you can kind of move and learn along at your own pace. It's, it's really fun to do, I find. And um, that's it. I'm gonna move it back to the previous slide in case anyone wants you know, access to the resources. Oops. That was so great. Thank you, Gail. Um, we had a question about this being recorded and yes, it is being recorded. We will um, email the recording along with the PowerPoint presentation out to participants. Um, it will also be available on Facebook and YouTube, um, the Bering Straits Native Corporation page. 
let's see. And I'm yeah. also going back and looking at the chats. Yeah, we had a question. Um, where do you consider yourself from if your family is from a specific village, but you didn't grow up there? And I see Josie Bourdon. Hi, Josie is on. And she had a nice comment saying, for example, my family is from Nome. However, I am from Anchorage. Uh, and yes. We have a lot of, um, as we saw, we have a lot of participants who are from the lower 48, but um, we like to share where in Alaska we're from. So you can, you know, say you're from Washington or wherever, but my family is originally from, you know, Mm -hmm. the village in Alaska, for example. Yeah. yeah, it's like with me, I, I don't claim to be from Shishmaraf or Mary's Igloo, even though, you know, I've been to both, both places. I spent a lot of time in Mary's Igloo going to camp, um, but I grew up in Oregon. I live in Nome, so I'm from both places, but my family comes from those other two villages. Um, and as for the mobile apps, I'm pretty sure that you should be able to download them onto an Android device. I'm not sure. I'm not. Okay, I'm honestly an iPhone user, so I'm not real familiar with like the Google Play Store. But if you have like a Samsung or something or just going on to Google, you should be able to um, type in the name of the apps and find them for your device. Um, do you guys want to share what your Inupak names are? If you want to drop it in the chat, it would be fun to see. It's always fun to share. And if you don't have an Eskimo name, um, you can always reach out to your elderly family members. And um, one way my family does it is we have a um, family heritage page on Facebook and our family members like to share um, you know historical stuff and one of them is um, what our great grandma or great grandpa for example what their Eskimo name was and in our culture you know those names usually are passed down so I would never laugh at anyone's in your back name, even if it is Ada, which is very cute. <laughs> Adiga, so good to see everybody's responses. Um, one thing I do want to add is um, I'm not the greatest conversationalist when it comes to speaking in your back. I'm not always able to um, practice, you know, speaking with somebody. I think because I'm trying to learn like so much of all the grammar rules and stuff that I kind of get overwhelmed in my mind. But as long as I have like my resources and stuff, um, then I'm able to at least, you know, translate, you know, what someone is saying. Let's see. Someone is um, wondering what the King Island, which one was the King Island link? Oh, well, so if you go to the Ili Sakativu website and then you click on their resources link, um, they have another sublink titled Dictionaries, and you can download the PDF version of the entire dictionary that's written. It's really old and it hasn't been updated, but there are also um, another link that you can click on to, it's an interactive dictionary where you can type in an English or the beginnings of an Inu backward and it'll come up with the proper spelling and definition sometimes. Nice, we have about 10 more minutes left. Um, 
Did oh. any, any of the participants want to um, share what learning in fact means to you or um, what word or phrase you'd like to learn in the next class, the next session? Um, I guess you can raise your hand and we can put you on screen or unmute you if you'd like. Also, yeah. um, oh, go ahead. <laughs> okay. Joy K had a good comment. A lot of times there is someone who knew your family and your original Inupak name. So it just takes a little bit of digging to, to find your family history. Mm -hmm. And if you aren't sure about who you can contact, it's always yeah, you know, I've, I've had people reach out to me on like Facebook or Instagram or TikTok and say, hey, I don't have any more native speakers in my family, but this is where my family comes from. Um, this is who I'm, I think I'm related to. Um, oftentimes I can help you find out like, you know, who you can contact um, to help you along with your research. So um, for the next um, session, I did want to create another worksheet. So I appreciate all the, um... <laughs> sorry, I appreciate, Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate the feedback and I guess I should have put my email address if anyone has like suggestions for the next class. We CC'd you on okay. our email. So um, yeah, Gail's email is in the email that we sent um, yesterday and today. Yes. If there are no elders left to find our Eskimo name, what would you recommend? I, I think. Um, keep, keep asking around, keep researching. Um, like I've seen other places where Pete, like on in Facebook, there's like the gnome post page. Um, and I've seen people ask there and a lot of people have been really helpful. Like, oh, I know who your family is and this is who you could ask. Even just the last name, a lot of times um, they'll know by your, if your last name has changed, um, go back a couple generations and let, let them know this was, um, this used to be our, our last name. Mm -hmm. Would you please count to 10? So I like that suggestion and I just recorded a video um, and I'm working with Bearing Straits to create a short video of me counting to 10 um, and then asking others to share in their dialect how they count to 10. So. Um, I'm working on the captions right now, and I kind of put, I kind of stopped that this week and put all my energy into prepping for today's um, workshop. So I will resume that and make sure that um, Anna and Lisa have that. Yeah, we had, we will share that recording on our page. So make sure you follow Bearing Straits' um, social media pages. I sure appreciate you and boy, I sure appreciate everybody's comments and interaction. Um, I'm going to work on some ideas for next week and please feel free to email me. Yes, thank you so much, Gail. Um, we have lots of messages still coming through. Oh, Lisa dropped the BSNC Facebook page. So I think a lot of people want like more words for introducing their children or their family. So I'll see if I can find that and then maybe some other like basic conversational words like yes, no, um, how are you, stuff like that. Yeah, that would be great. Um, someone had a question, what are the proper uses for Inupak versus Inupat? 
Oh, and Tatok answered that Inupiat is the oh. language, Inupiat is the people. Okay. Thank you. Adiga. Um, so the classes that um, I'll be teaching this fall at the college campus are going to be in the North Slope dialect um, because that's a material that I have it for. Um, but I do try to focus more on sharing what I know about the Seward Peninsula dialects on like my own personal TikTok or Facebook or anything like that. Lots of thank you comments. Thank every I I really appreciate everybody's time. Yes, thank you. Thank you so much, Gail. So in closing, I just want to mention that um, the SNC is very pleased to be offering more cultural initiatives and workshops like this. Um, we encourage you to check out our cultural initiatives webpage on the BSNC website and you know, stay tuned for more workshops like this. Um, so Kionic book, everyone for attending. Remember this is uh, the first session of three and we look forward to seeing everyone attend next Friday at noon. Um, yeah, so thank you so much. Arika. Bye, everybody. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Thanks, Bill. Bye.